Hi guys, Karen Proctor here. I am back with another video on the things that I've learned in my 50 plus years of living. Hopefully these little nuggets will inspire you. Uh, if you are a first time viewer to my page, welcome to my page. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel turn on the notification bell that way when i upload new content you will be privileged to it and so yeah today i'm back with another video part two uh some of the things that i've learned over my 50 plus years of living again i hope that it will inspire you it will motivate you uh drop down in the comments put your comments there let's get a conversation started uh, like I said in video number one, chew the meat and spit out the bones. Take what's good for you, what's not good for you, throw it away. So for those of you that do not know me, this is your first time viewing me. Again, I'm Karen Proctor. I am a empowerment life coach, also a Christian life coach. I'm the author of seven amazing books. And this is my book, Coach Me Destiny. It's calling this book uh it's for coaching so it is an excellent tool for those that want to be coached you can find that book on uh the internet any bookstore on the internet but i hope that you will purchase it from me you can reach out to me on my website www.karenproctor.com so let's get into it video number one i dropped a lot of nuggets uh, it's just too much to do an entire video. And this video is just, again, some of the things that I have learned along life way through trial, through uh, era, just living over <laughs> half of a century. The more you live, hopefully the more you shall learn. And with that being said, I also said that I am a Christian life coach. So I do life God's way, the best that I can. And so uh, some of these things I have learned in addition to, you know, just coaching people as a, a pastor. Yeah, I've been a pastor for years, uh, but my dominant call is the uh, prophetic and the apostolic. I've been uh, ordained and licensed as a prophetess way back in the days then God saw fit to, like some people will call it an elevation, came over into the apostolic call of it. And so, yeah, I'm so used to pouring into people's life also, I am a Christian counselor. Yeah, that's one of my degrees is Christian counselor. Uh, so if you just really want to know more about me, you can go to my website again at www.karenproctor.com. You can read my bio. I know it needs a little bit of updating, but you can see my education, my experience. I have uh, mentored and coached counsel people for years. So... Uh, I am a mother of three adult children and three beautiful little grandchildren. And so recently it was my birthday at the beginning of this month. And I took a trip out to L.A., Los Angeles, and just really, really enjoyed myself. Went all through Beverly Hills, ate at some of the finest places, went downtown. We just had a good time. And so the morning of my birthday, I woke up as my custom. I always start my day with prayer and just Thanksgiving, thanking God for another day. And more importantly, thanking God for that year. And as I just began to meditate, I thought about, you know, it would be nice to just reflect back over the years of my life. And look at all the nuggets that I have learned. And so I tried to give a nugget for each year. And I know I have way more than that, but it's just some things that came to mind. And I began to jot those things down. The things that I've learned in 
my half a century and a little change <laughs> of living. So I figured that I'll be uh, sharing it with somebody because we can all learn from each other. I know I learn from people and I'm a life learner. And keeping with my Christian principles, the Bible tells us that the older women ought to train the younger women. So if we have any younger uh, than me that is viewing, I want you to take these nuggets and um, apply it to your life if it fit in. Like I said, if it doesn't fit in, throw it away because everything is not for for everybody. Um, <laughs> like I said in video number one, I was kind of tickled when I look back over my age and say, wow, are you really that age for real? So, yeah. So let me continue on with yesterday. If you see me looking at my phone, um, it's so much. So I had to jot it down. I, I wasn't going to try to commit everything to memory because I knew if I didn't write it down, I would forget something. And these are the nuggets that I learned and more. So I wrote it down. And so I'm going to take off where I left off in video number one. So, I'm at 44, number 44. Um, number 44, a dog bring a bone will take a bone. You probably heard that before. A dog that bring a bone will take a bone. What, what does that mean? Mm. Normally, in relationship to gossip, the person that is bringing you gossip they're just there to see what you're going to say about it, and then they'll run back. That's their bone. They'll run back and say what you have said. Normally, they say, girl, listen, don't tell nobody. I'm just telling you. And if the truth be told, they probably done went to 10 other people before they even got their, their way to you. So you're not the only person that knows this. A dog that bring a bone will carry a bone. I learned that. Um, number 45, reading is fundamental. Some people feel like today that they don't have to read. It's in a world of social media. I don't have to read anything. But reading is where you're going to learn. And I once heard this, and you probably heard it yourself as well. If you want to hide information, you want to hide knowledge, put it in a book. Because certain people would never read. Hint, hint. Do you get it? So reading is still fundamental. Number six. No man is an island unto him or herself. No, 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 no. And I know by nature sometimes we are. You do have some people that we call like introverts and loners. For the most part, I'm a loner. But we still can't be an island unto ourselves. We need to be surrounded with people. If we didn't, God wouldn't have never made Eve after he made Adam. And Adam and Eve would have never got together and had children and became fruitful and multiplied. So, yeah, no man is an island unto himself. Why am I feeling like I wrote that again at the end? Well, we'll see. Number 40, no, 47. It's a matter of opinion. Yeah. Some things are just a matter of opinion. It's not the gospel. It's just a matter of opinion. Uh, some people may say, eat some now, save for, some for later. It's just a matter of opinion. Some people say tomato. Some people say tomato. It's not a big deal. It's just a matter of opinion. Some things are only a matter of opinion and opinion it's not a fact it's not a god's it's not the gospel not written in stone free yourself free yourself 48 don't sweat the small stuff don't sweat the small stuff it's not going to change your life here or there don't sweat the small stuff it's not going to make a difference in your life now let me back up a little bit some small things do make a difference but not all the time. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's not going to make a difference in your life. Number 49. 
Don't show your teeth to every guy you meet. Don't show your teeth to every guy you meet. So in other words, don't move too fast. Don't move too fast lest you regret it. I'm talking to the sisters. And then again, there may be some men out there. Sometimes you move too fast. So mainly saying this power to the sisters because there's a level of shame that's brought on a woman unlike it's brought to a man. So don't show your teeth too fast to every guy you meet. So don't move too fast unless you live to regret it. Now I want to throw this little story in there. I, I remember I had to be probably in my late 20s. Um, I met this guy. He worked at a place that I used to go. And he would write poems to me. And invite me out to dinner and everything. But I'm glad I'm not the type that moved too fast. Down in my knowing, <laughs> like the old folks say, down in my sanctified soul, I knew that wasn't, first of all, I wasn't attracted to him anyway. And then secondly, he could not convince me by telling me the things he would do for me, where he wanted to take me, his poems and all of that. Glad I wasn't the one to show my teeth too fast, moving too fast. Come to find out that gentleman was the first cousin of my father. He was a younger cousin, a younger man than my father, still much older than me. So that's another thing. I never really care for men that's so, so, so older than me. But he happened to be a younger uh, cousin to my father, first cousin. I did not know it. But one day I went home and I, I told my mom, uh, I wasn't living with my mom, but, you know, we chat all the time. And so I say, Mom, I think this guy may be some kin to me. I say, I don't know why, but I get the feeling that he is my family by my father's side. How did I know that? He and my father did not look alike. They did not hold the same last name. But it's something that was on the inside of me say, this man is my father family even though we never had those kind of conversations but as fate would have it my father got sick and that gentleman's sister came to my father's house one Saturday morning she introduced herself to me my dad never told me about these cousins first cousins of his the sister was more in the age set of my father. And she she was like, oh, Karen, I heard Bill got sick. Um, how is he doing? Blah, 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 blah. She was like, she introduced herself to me. I'm your dad first cousin. I know he probably told you about me. I didn't say anything like, oh no, because I didn't want to hurt her feelings. And she was like, I know your mother very well. You, uh, your mother and I went to school together and she started talking about her siblings and she described this man and what he does. And I say, hey, I know a man that fit that dis description. He worked at so-and-so and so community center. And she says, well, that's my brother. I said, oh, really? but I didn't go into details. I saw the gentleman that week because I met the sister that Saturday. So the following week, he come running to me, cuz, 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 I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. My sister told me she met you. I had to tell my uh, sister and my mom how I would write you poems and blah, 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 and how I wanted to take you out, cuz, I'm so sorry. I said, you don't have to be sorry because you did not know that we were family. I did not know that we were family. But what if I had bought in to that? Back to what I said. You can't show your teeth to every guy you meet. Mm. What if I have went for 
the lines he tried to drop on me. That was my father's first cousin. My dad, so when I told my dad, I say, dad, I met so-and-so, so -and, -so, and he said, yeah, I know him. He said, I gave him his first job when he came here. Cause my dad in his younger days after the military migrated from his city, same state, but migrated from his city and came to the next city. So my dad was already established and working a good job, was the foreman on his job. He said, yeah, when he came, I gave him his first job. I said, dad, you know he tried to hit on your daughter. But yeah, so don't show your teeth to every guy you meet. <laughs> uh, number 50, take time to smell the roses. I know we are living in a fast, fast-paced society, but sometimes you got to slow down, slow down, smell the roses. So in other words, embrace the moment. Uh, if you go out to dinner that day or you with friends and family, everybody is scrolling, strolling on their phones, strolling on their iPads. They're not even embracing the conversation. They're not even... Uh, sharing the moment with friends and family. Uh, not only that, you got to, when I say take time to smell the roses, look at and appreciate those free things, those natural things that God has given you, like sitting on the park, stargazing up in the sky, looking at the beautiful, the clouds, the sun, the moon, just appreciating those things, the creation that God has given us, looking at the trees. I don't know about you, but I'm a nature girl. And so that's a way of unwinding as well. We're dealing with a lot of, finally, people are beginning to deal with mental illness. Uh, a lot of people are stressed out. And so that's one way of de-stressing, decluttering de <laughs> de the brain. It's just by stopping, taking time to smell the roses. 51. If you don't value yourself, people will not value you either. You got to, uh, yeah, if you don't uh, value yourself, people won't value you either. And I know that as a small business owner and a woman of great compassion, uh, sometimes you just want to do for people and help people, but you still have to get to the place where you put a value on yourself because sometimes people won't value the service that you give. And not only as a business owner, I want to say this even as a woman, you have to value yourself because if you don't value yourself, the man ain't going to value you either because he can get a hunch of how you feel about yourself. And so he will begin to treat you like you treat yourself. Now he'll value the woman that values herself. So you got to learn how to value yourself. I hope that I'm help helping somebody out. So I'm going to treat this like my birthday giveaway. Um, I got a lot of good things for my birthday. I was blessed. I was surprised uh, of the blessings that I got for my birthday. So this is like me giving back. How? By sharing with you my wisdom, my knowledge. <laughs> uh, 52. Be still and let God fight your battle. Mm-hmm. Be still and let God fight your battle. I know times where we want to say, you know what? I'm going to let her have it. Uh, she don't know me. What we say today, don't send for me. 
unless I send for you? Or who do they think they are bothering with? But in all of my century of living, this is one of the nuggets that I have learned. To be still and let God fight your battle. I have seen people that came up against me. Now, this could be a whole video by itself alone. I've seen people that has come up against me for no reason. I was just still. Not that I'm a coward or anything like that, but I was just still. And I saw God move in every situation. I didn't have to lift a hand. One thing I have learned, that the strong arm of God always get him the victory. And he don't play by the people that he loves. Oh, baby, I have learned that. Like God says that we are the apple of his eye. I truly believe and know, and this is not bragging. I'm just saying, I know that I'm one of the apples of God's eye. You got to see yourself like that. I've seen God take care of people. I didn't have to put my mouth on them. I didn't have to uh, wish ill against them. I didn't have to do none of that. I was just still, and God fought every battle for me. So I am a believer in that. Mm-hmm. So 53, don't do anything you're going to be ashamed of tomorrow. You know how sometimes people say, oh, I'm young, I'm young, I'm just having fun. And that's good. Yeah, we're all going to make mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. And as long as I live, I, I mentioned this yesterday. That's why they got erased on pencils to erase when you write something wrong. But some things cannot be erased. Some things we do, we know we're doing it wrong. And we go, I don't care. Mm. I don't care. So whatever you do, just do it knowing that you're going to have to face it tomorrow. And if it don't show up tomorrow, know that the skeletons is going to come out the bag one day. Uh, think of it like this. You see when politicians run uh, for a political office, they dig way back in the archives of their life. She used to do this. He used to do that. Yes, God is a forgiving God. And yes, we all make mistakes. But then there are some things you just don't want to Pandora box to be opened up. So if you could, I know we're all on a journey. We have to learn. We have to grow. And there are some things we're going to do. There are some things in my life that I can't erase. But if you got somebody that's giving you wisdom, giving you heads up, been a place that you hasn't gone before. This is one of my favorite quotes. And maybe I should have thrown that in there. A wise man learn from the mistakes of others and a fool learn off his own. So if you got somebody telling you, okay, if you're going to smoke weed, if you're going to shoot up, if you're going to pop pills, if you're going to show your teeth to every guy you meet, if, if you're going to steal, uh, whatever it is, and you know by the time you get a certain age, Maybe your whole way of thinking has changed. But then you got to be able to stand up for the things that people throw out there at you. So sometimes if we can th think it through, is it really worth it? Th think it through. Some things you can't recover from. Some things you could recover from it. But some things you just can't recover from. Mm-hmm. So number 54. Don't put off for today what you can't don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today. And why do I say this? Don't put off uh for tomorrow what you can do today. Because opportunity only knocks once, sometimes, not all the time. 
but sometimes opportunity only knock once. And then there's sometimes where the opportunity will come up again, but it's years and years and years from now. So if you can do something today that's going to put you uh, in a better position, do it. I know a lot of times people like to procrastinate. And sometimes I procrastinate with some things. But you got to know those things that you can pro uh, procrastinate with. And you got to know those things that, you know what, come on. I better do this today. Tomorrow ain't on my side. Number 55. I'm almost finished. Um, the lack of planning on somebody else's side does not constitute an emergency on my side. You know, you know how sometimes people, they don't plan, they don't care nothing about tomorrow, but then they always want to throw their stuff on you. Like when tomorrow come, you know you were supposed to do that weeks ago, but now you're trying to make it my emergency. No, 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 no. It's not my emergency. I'll do what I can for you if I can. But if I can't, it's not my fault. Something like this happened to me just this week. I got a call. Hey, I need you to help me in the next 30 minutes. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out, but I need you to do this now. And I had to say, hold up. Wait a minute. You don't know what I got going on right now. I'm in the midst of something. And your emergency is 30 minutes from now. And I'm supposed to drop what I'm doing when you knew that this is something you had to do. You knew it. This is not just an emergency because when I talked to you two weeks ago, you was telling me about this situation and I was waiting for you to uh, send me whatever you needed to send me so that I can be able to help you out. Now, all of a sudden, 30 minutes from now, I'm supposed to jump up and run for you like a bat out of hell. It ain't so. Mm -mm. The lack of planning on your on your end does not constitute an emergency on my end. Now, did I help the person out? Yes. But I didn't run like a bed out of hell. I said, you're going to have to wait on me because I am about to do thus, thus, and thus. Mm. So, number 56, stay true to yourself. I've had to learn that. Stay true to myself. I'm not going to, I can't be like nobody else. I, I, I kind of mentioned this yesterday. I'm not the girl down the street. I'm not trying to play the girl down the street. I blossom into a full blown woman, beautiful woman. I'm not going to try to be the woman down the street, even as a life coach. I'm not going to try to be the life coach like some other people. It would only work the way that God gave it to me. I'm not going to try to be the Christian counselor like nobody else. I have the education. I have the experience. I have the tools. I am so different from anybody else. I may share some similarities, but my handprint is different. My mom had three daughters. I'm the baby. I'm different from my two sisters. They are two beautiful women, but we're still just different. We may have some similarities with our faith. Um, we may like some of the same stuff, and then again, we may not. So I'm never going to try to walk in somebody else's uh, shoes. I got to stay true to myself, even as... Uh, the prophet of God. I'm not going to try to prophesy like somebody else. I'm not going to try to teach like somebody else. I'm not going to try to uh, run my school of ministry like somebody else. No, I got to stay true to myself.
Stay true to myself. Yeah. So you're going to feel more comfortable. <laughs> and then you got to remember there are people out there that's waiting just for you. Yes, 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 yes. This person may be doing what you do, but you have a different spin on it. That person was called to a certain group of people or a certain person, and you're called to a certain people or to a certain group of people. So you got to stay true to you. Uh, some people try to mimic you with your style, with everything. Come on. But I can only be true to me. That's one thing that I didn't have to uh, suffer with. Even as a young girl, I was always confident, not cocky, not arrogant, but I was just always pleased the way God made me. And I always say this, not trying to be rude. Well, if you don't like it, I, I don't know what to say. Because guess what? I'm always trying to give my best. And when I'm not giving my best, I know it. So either you're going to rock with me or you don't. So there you go with the things, some of the nuggets that I have learned over my 50 plus years of living. And I'm getting ready to do, launch a series for women. This has been in the cards for the longest. I've started writing a book a couple of years ago and never finished it uh, for the women. And the Lord gave me a dream about, that was last year, about a year and a half ago. That's one of the ways that God speaks to me. Ever since I was a little girl through dreams and visions. So he showed me this dream with uh, young ladies. I'm not going to go into all the details of the dream right now, but that I will be pouring into them, training them, showing them how to be a godly women based on the word of God, based on my experience. Uh, sitting here today, <laughs> feel like I'm in the mother's seat. Young at heart, but hey, it is what it is. I'm at that point in life now where more than ever to pour into the younger women. And with that being said, with the book that he gave me to write some years ago, that's just laying on the hard drive of my computer. Um, last year, with the, the dream, and last year also, no, not last year, because we was in a pandemic, so I wasn't going out too much. Um, so it had to be 2019. I'm coming from a empowerment service one Saturday morning with a friend. And as we're coming out of the building, it was this guy. I perceive him to be the husband of one of the ladies that was in the meeting that probably just hung around uh, waiting for his wife to come out. And so as I was walking, the man began to prophesy. And the friend that I was with, she was like, look at this crazy man. Look at this crazy man. Good thing I never discount people. Uh, she was like, he got on his PJs. He crazy. So the man began to uh, call out to me. Hey, young lady. Uh, he said, you. So I stopped. He said, there is books in you. Now, I never saw this gentleman a day in my life. Don't know him from Adam's house cat. If I see him right now, I won't know who he is. He said, there's books in you. He didn't know that I was already an author of six books at the time. I've since did one after that. He says, and you have a lot in you to teach these I'm not going to say how he described the women. He said, but you have a lot in you to teach these women. He said, you, God has put a lot into you. And so that's confirmation. The Bible say out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. The book that he's given me, the dream that he's given me, and now this man of God 
telling me. There's a books in you. He said, money is in your hand, but don't let nobody use you. Perhaps God was showing him my heart of compassion, my heart of gold. Uh, and so with that being said, I've been working on some things and I'm getting ready to launch it soon. So you can sign up for my email list by going to my website at www.karenproctor.com. There's a tab there that says connect with the apostle. Say, apostle, I want to connect with you. Or you can even drop down in the comment section of this very video. Video, video, video. <laughs> See, nobody's perfect. God take all of our imperfections and use it for his honor and glory. Uh, so you can drop down in the comment section of this video and say, hey, Apostle, I want to connect with you. You can put your information there or I'm going to leave my information as well. So I hope that these nuggets would empower you. You can reach out to me for Christian coaching, uh, for Christian counseling or the word of the Lord or you need somebody to mentor you, to train you. I met a young lady about the day before I went on my trip to LA in the hair store, buying some hair. <laughs> um, she was motherless. The Lord showed me her burden and she had a burden for her daughter. She was a young lady. Um, and the Lord showed me that. And I just, you know, gently ministered to her. And I asked her, um, what about your mom? Does your mom know? Are you sharing this with your mother? She said, no, my mom died when I was three years old. I said, do you have a mother figure? She was like, no. So if you don't have that mother figure in your life, you can reach out to, reach out to me. So God bless you for now. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment, share, share it with your friends. If it's not for you, maybe it's for your friend girls. Uh, again, chew the meat, spit out the bones. Just wanted to share some of the things that I've learned through my 50 plus years of being on this earth. God bless you. And also, you can support my work by reaching out to me for this book, Coach Me Destiny. It's calling. Bye for now.